This is the DJI Neo, and it's one of DJI's cheapest drones, but it's also one of their more interesting drones because it's not only a camera drone, it's an FPV drone as well. You can use it with your smartphone, you can use it with the DJI RC N3, but you can even use it with the likes of the DJI Goggles 3 or N3 to give yourself an FPV experience. Now, it certainly wasn't the best at any of those things, but what it did offer was a lot of functionality in a low price. Now, DJI are about to replace this, and there is a new version called the Neo 2 coming. And whilst that in itself is quite exciting, there's some rather interesting things happening with the Neo 2 that we've been able to see from the FCC filings that have released in the last few days. And today, I'm going to explain what that is all about. Now, the FCC filings tend to be a bit of a view into the future of what is going to come from a manufacturer. And whilst they can hide this information, sometimes stuff does make its way out. And whilst it's not going to tell you absolutely everything, it certainly can be rather interesting if you know what to look for. Now, yesterday... DJI added the Neo 2 to the FCC file list. It's going to have a model number of DEN225. And whilst this isn't particularly surprising because there has been leaks, what is a bit of a surprise has been what's added alongside it, and that is something called the DJI Neo 2 Digital Transceiver. Now, looking through the documentation for both of these products, there isn't any images and there isn't even an image of the FCC ID. However, we do have all of the RF testing information. Now, the RF information is split across multiple documents and what's actually very interesting here isn't what it does say, but is actually what it doesn't say. And what I mean by that is the original Neo from DJI worked across multiple different communication methods. You could connect to the Neo with your smartphone via Wi-Fi and you could use it with OcuSync. The original Neo had both Wi-Fi and OcuSync built in as standard. However, looking at the reports from DJI, it seems that they're going to be doing things a little bit differently with the Neo 2. For instance, we can see that the Neo 2 does support Wi-Fi like the Neo 1. It supports 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi on 802.11a, n, AC as well as AX. We also have testing information for Wi-Fi on 2.4 gigs, supporting 802.11b, GN and AX. Then there is support for GFSK. This is the communication protocol that DJI use with the RC motion controller or the FPV remote version 3. This isn't the same communication protocol that the likes of the RCN3 uses. This uses OcuSync. That is specifically for the motion controller and the FPV Remote 3. Now, at this point, we'd usually be moving on to talk about support for OcuSync because that is what happened with the original Neo. Not only did it have Wi-Fi, it had O4 as well. However, that doesn't appear to be the case with the Neo 2. And in fact, that is all of the RF testing information that there is, and this information implies that the Neo 2 as standard only supports Wi-Fi or GFSK, which means you'll be able to connect it to your smartphone. You would likely be able to use it with the RC Motion or the FPV Remote Version 3, but you would not be able to use it with the RC N3 or use it with the standard OcuSync system, including using it with your DJI FPV Goggles 3. Now, I'll be honest with you, at this point, I was rather confused because I was looking through this documentation and then we also had, as I stated earlier, this DJI Neo 2 digital transceiver. Now, when I first saw this, I actually assumed that this was going to be like a new version of the O4e unit, perhaps with the new camera that's inevitably going to come with the Neo 2. But it was only when I started looking at this all as a whole, I actually realised what I think is going on here, and that is that DJI are going to sell the Neo 2 as a Wi-Fi model and have the OcuSync module as a digital transceiver module that you can plug into it. Now, this is completely unheard of in the way DJI have done things with regards to OcuSync. Whilst we have seen DJI actually release modules like their cellular modules, when it comes to OcuSync, these modules have always been 
built into the drones. The only product I can ever remember that it technically had a removable module was the DJI Syndense remote controller for the Inspire 2. Pretty much every other product that DJI have released used OcuSync as part of the main board, or at least built into the product. Now again, looking through the RF filings, we don't have any images, but we do have what I would expect to find in the main documentation for the DJI Neo or the Neo 2. We have the DJI Neo 2 digital transceiver module, which has a model of DEP1. It supports SDR, which is OcuSync on both 2.4 gigs and 5 gigahertz. It supports up to 60 megahertz bandwidth on 2.4 gigahertz and up to 80 megahertz bandwidth on 5 gigahertz. This is basically the DJI O4 spec. It has two antenna ports. It supports up to about 26 dBm of RF output and it has an input voltage of 5 volts. Now, as I said earlier, I originally thought that this was going to be a new ear unit for use with O4, but it was only when I got into this and started to delve in did I realize that this is actually an accessory for the Neo. It's actually listed in here as an accessory. When we go down, it's got two antenna inputs and outputs. It supports all of the main modes, and you can see down here that it is an accessory for the Neo 2 and it is part of the Neo 2 as a product range. What this would mean from being able to use the drone is that the standard Neo 2 with just Wi-Fi and GFSK would work directly with your smartphone for communication so you could control the drone via Wi-Fi like you can with the Neo and it will likely work with the DJI Love Toy because this uses GFSK. Technically, this remote, the DJI FPV Remote version 3, also uses GFSK, but that doesn't mean DJI will allow it to work. But that Wi-Fi only would mean that it would not work with this, the DJI RC N3, or any of the DJI FPV goggles that is supporting the Neo, so the Goggles 3 or the Goggles N3. It would have to have that SDR module, that DJI Neo 2 transceiver module, to be able to be used with this, the DJI RC N3, or the DJI FPV goggles. And it feels like DJI is either trying to do something like sell this with the upgradable option to use these accessories, or they're trying to get around something else. What is really bizarre is that the first Neo supported all of this as standard out the box, but according to the specs, the standard Neo is only going to support Wi-Fi, which means direct control from your phone or probably just control with the love toy. Now, as for what sort of size module would this be? Well, it certainly wouldn't need to be as big as the likes of the O3 or the O4 Pro ear unit. In fact, it wouldn't even need to be as big as this, the standard O4 ear unit, because this is a fully standalone unit. The O4 ear unit has both the RF chipset, the power amplifiers, the main processor, and the memory on board. If DJI wanted to create an upgrade module for OcuSync on this, they would only actually need to use the S2 chipset, which is the smaller of the two that you see there, the one with that 38 letter on board, and it would need the RF power amplification and a little bit of voltage regulation. There is no reason DJI could not make an upgrade module that's roughly half the size, if not smaller than the O4 ear unit, because the main processing would be already on board the aircraft. They're in need of a memory. Most of the power regulation and control would be on board the aircraft. And literally, you would simply need the RF power amplifier and antenna connections and the S2 chipset, which is that small one of the two there. And I think DJI could make this as small as that corner that you see there. 
All of this info does somewhat answer some of the weird pictures that we saw online apparently around the new Neo 2 a few months ago. You can see here an image of what appears to be a Neo style drone with something taped to the top of it. And in fact, it looks like there is an O4E unit taped to the top of it. And now we probably understand why. This could just be an early version that DJI was testing literally with an O4E unit to see how it would behave. But it does somewhat hint that DJI have definitely been working on having this external module, but I can't imagine for one minute it's going to look anything like this. So what this implies is DJI are going to release a Neo 2, which is Wi-Fi only, and there's an upgradable option to make it support OcuSync. Now, this is very unusual. In the past, when DJI have wanted to do two different things, they would just release two different models. You'd have had, say, a Neo 2 and a Neo 2 Pro. The Pro having OcuSync, the Neo 2 having Wi-Fi. DJI may feel that sales of the Neo on its own have been so big that it warrants doing it this way rather than two separate models. So there are lots of people maybe buying the Neo as an aircraft on its own and then they're not selling accessories like the remote controllers, which tells them that they're actually using it with Wi-Fi or DJI are trying to get around some restrictions in regulations that mean it could be easier to bring the drone into, say, the US market without OcuSync on board and then sell the module separately. This actually got me thinking, and I have been chatting to a few people around this, and the reality is everything here is speculation, but it did get us thinking that with all of these bans and all of these problems that DJI are facing, could it be easier to import a Wi-Fi only product into the US and then either install the OcuSync module in the US later or sell that module for users to install themselves. This is the first drone that we have seen DJI do this with. The Mini 5, which is also set to release in the near future, does not appear to use this configuration. That would hint that this is more related to the Neo than it is compliance. But if we do see DJI start to do this more and more, it could be another way of them trying to get around the restrictions that they're facing. One conversation I have had with someone is that the potential FCC bans were related to the RF systems. And as a result of that, perhaps this is a way around it. But it is all speculation. But if we do start to see DJI do this on more and more of their models, it would give us a hint that this is some form of back door to try and get past some of the FCC issues that they've been facing in recent times. Regardless, in the end, what we have is a Neo 2 is coming. It's Wi-Fi as standard, upgradable to OcuSync. No new remote controllers, so it will likely work with the RCN3, the Love Toy 3, as well as the Goggles 3 and N3. There is no hints of new goggles. There is no hints of new remote controllers yet. So right now, it seems to be just the aircraft. And I will definitely be ordering one of these in when it's out, because I want to see exactly what DJI have done here with this model. Now, other than that, there isn't much of the technical details in the documentation. The battery on the Neo 2 is a little bit bigger compared to the original one, but we don't have any info on things such as the camera, flight time, anything like that. This information is mostly for certification purposes, not out and out specifications. I am incredibly interested and excited about what the Neo 2 has to offer. Obviously, I think we all believe it's going to have a new camera. I'm a bit disappointed that there isn't a new O4E unit, what I thought that transceiver was. Although the DJI O4 standard E unit is based off the Neo camera, so it is reasonable to think that we could get an upgraded O4E unit with the Neo 2 camera, hopefully solving many of the issues that that original O4E unit has. But there isn't any evidence of that happening today, but that doesn't mean it won't happen with a new Neo around the corner. Other than that, this is strange, but it is very interesting. And when it comes out, I'm going to be getting one in to tear it apart. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. So, Neo 2, Wi-Fi is standard, separate OcuSync module, slightly bigger battery. Hopefully, more info to come in the near future. If you have found this video useful, 
please do consider check out the links to my Patreon as well as buying me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.